Welcome Conference USA fans, I'm Nicole Cartier and you're watching Hyphen Nation, connecting you to Conference USA this week. Well, next week we begin our Winter Championships. Houston hosts the Swimming and Diving Championships starting February 15th and the following week we head to Birmingham where UAB hosts indoor track and field for the first time in the city's brand new sporting facility, the Crossplex. Right now we hear from Houston swimming coach Augie Bush and UAB track and field coach Kurt Thomas on hosting their sports championships. Um, the season's actually gone really well. We, uh, we've gotten to compete in the Crossplex facility several times already and you know, the benefit of being able to run on that type of track consistently has paid off almost immediately, um, just with better times, um, but just having the better facility and having it close to home has, has really paid off. So um, the, a lot of the girls are doing really, really well, probably further along than they're used to during the indoor season. Um, we've had a couple of really big performances by some distance runners and some sprinters, um, and, and so we're just looking to try to continue that and try to do it here on our home facility. It's an honor to be able to host it. Um, you know, all the institutions have had to or gotten to host outdoor championships in the past, and um, you know we don't have all the facilities um, in place that we like, and so um, and so we've never really gotten to uh, to host anything, and so this has been a blessing because it's such an amazing facility, and we get to host, um, and hopefully we kind of continue getting to host um, the indoor championships every year. Um, again, you know, being at home is a huge benefit to our girls that we've never had the, the pleasure of able to do before um, and again the familiarity there's some of the schools in the conference that have never run on this track a few have run on it once um, we get to run on all, all the time so if that you know means you know a little extra home cooking for us um, you know we'll, we'll take that I mean first off it, for the conference it's huge um, you know some sports are used to being televised track and field is not televised very often anywhere um, so it's, it's a big benefit for us um, hopefully financially for the uh, for the conference but even just for UAB it gets to showcase um, well and for the conference it gets to showcase um, the facility itself and not a lot of people know unless you're a big track enthusiast how good our conference has, has grown to be the last several years especially on the women's side um, having all 12 teams and, and having just such amazing athletes um, they can compete with anyone in the country and sometimes better than anyone in the country so um, it'll get to showcase a little bit um, I think just for the from the athlete's perspective, getting to see themselves on TV is, is pretty neat, um, especially when they're doing well. And so it's just a huge benefit to everybody. Um, for, and for our program itself, we'll get to use that in recruiting and, and hopefully uh, you know, get a couple of recruits that, um, that that draws a little bit. Really excited. I, being from Arizona, it was an outdoor facility. It, we had a nice pool, but we, we could never host anything really, um, no college meets. So I'm excited to, to host a meet that we're actually, you know, shaving and tapering for. It'll be a first for me. Um, it's a fast pool. I think it's to our advantage that, that we know the facility so well um, and just know the blocks and the walls and, and, and the lines on the pool very well. Um, so I, I, think, uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun hosting this. Very high level. I, I, I know that SMU is going to be really good. This looks like one of the better teams they've had in a while. Um, they're certainly a, going to be a force at NC2As. How much they focus on this, I'm not quite sure. Um, Rice will be tough. They actually, you know, obviously the conference champions last year. They're going to be good. Um, I think that uh, Seth trains them really well. And then um, I look to East Carolina to, to have strong relays and they have strong distance as well. And, um, you know, we'll be, I think we can battle with all those teams. And um, I know Tulane and Marshall will bring it too. Remember, these two championships are televised for the first time in CUSA history on Fox Sports in your area. Check your listings to be sure you catch all of the CUSA championship action. Well, we are less than a month away from the 2012 CUSA Basketball Championships in Memphis, and there certainly hasn't been a shortage of exciting games this regular season. Right now, we count down the top five buzzer beaters so far this year in Conference USA. Number five, Tulane women welcomed SEC's number 20 LSU to Fogelman Arena. This game goes into overtime. The Tigers and Green Wave are tied at 62 all. Freshman phenom Danielle Blagg takes the inbounds pass with two seconds left, shoots the layup, ball goes in, she's fouled, she converts the three-point play for the win. Green Wave win at 65-62. That was their first win over the Tigers since 
December 31st, 1999. Number four, back in Fogelman Arena, except this time we're on the men's side. Rice visits Tulane. Rice is down 47-49 to the Green Wave. 2.1 seconds left on the clock. Connor Frizzell, who comes into this game shooting 34% from behind the arc, rolls around to the left of the goal, takes an inbounds pass from Ahmad Ibrahim, Frizzell steps, takes a dribble, and releases with four tenths of a second left. The ball is in the air. The buzzer sounds. The shot goes in. The Owls win in Fogelman Arena. And number three, we've got Rice again, except this time it's UAB left celebrating. Just four days after the Owls nail Tulane with a three-pointer at the buzzer, the Blazers come into Tudor Fieldhouse. We are in overtime. 7.8 seconds are on the clock. Connor Frizzell puts Rice up 60-58 with one of his signature trays. UAB's got last possession. Jordan Swing takes it, tries to find an open man, and with two seconds left, Robert Williams is waiting at the top of the key. Swing passes to Williams. Williams catches, shoots, buzzer sounds, nothing but net. Blazers were down 17 points at the half. They go on to win it for their first conference win. And number two, Rice again for the third time on this list, except it's the Miners who are subject to the Owls. Both teams tied at 75. Rice gets last possession point guard Dylan Ennis, races the ball up the court, finds freshman Julian Debose on the other side of the floor on the wing, Debo's dribbles with UTEP's Michael Perez quick on his heels. He dribbles inside the arc. He shoots. Perez's hand is in his face. Ball drops in for two points. That's Debo's first field goal of the game, and he makes it count. Coming in for your number one buzzer beater, it's a deja vu from last year as SMU visits Tulsa at the Reynolds Center. Game is tied at 55 all. Jeremiah Samaripas brings it up the court. Time is expiring. He dribbles to the right, sees no one open, goes back to the top of the key. He's got a defender, dribbles, steps back, shoots. It goes in just as the buzzer sounds. Mustangs win it again on the road at Tulsa on the last second shot. Now, have you witnessed a buzzer beater that tops your list? Let us know which one in Conference USA history is your favorite. Tweet us, email us, or let us know on Facebook. We would love to hear from you. Also, remember to book your trip and secure your tickets now for the Conference USA Basketball Championships in Memphis. Watch both the women's and the men's tournaments March 7th through March 10th. Log on to conferenceusa.com right now for more information. And that'll do it for Hyphen Nation this week. Be sure to check back here next Thursday with more Conference USA action. I'm Nicole Cartier for the Conference USA Digital Network.